Adult Cardiac Life Support, ACLS Algorithm. Today we are going to learn the ACLS algorithm step by step. But before we dive into the steps, let's talk about some basic concepts that will be used in the algorithm. ACLS cannot be done alone. It has to be performed as a synchronized teamwork where everyone knows exactly what their role is. When you are doing CPR, you have to also think about the quality. First, push hard and fast, at least 2 inches or 5 centimeters, at a rate of 100 to 120 per minute. Second, minimize interruptions and compressions. Third, avoid excessive ventilation. Fourth, change compressor every 2 minutes, or sooner if fatigued. Fifth, if there's no advanced airway, compression to ventilation ratio should be 30 to 2. Sixth, if you monitor low, or decreasing patient and tidal carbon dioxide on quantitative waveform capnography, reassess your CPR quality. Then, how do we interpret end tidal carbon dioxide? Carbon dioxide is the end product of cellular metabolism. Therefore, end tidal CO2 detects cellular metabolism, blood flow to the lungs to excrete the CO2, and the function of lung ventilation. Thus, high end tidal carbon dioxide reading during resuscitation, correlates with improved cardiac output and patient outcomes. Normal waveform capnography looks like this. The excreted carbon dioxide is graphed against time. The peak CO2 at the end of expiration is the end tidal carbon dioxide, and the normal range is 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury. If end tidal carbon dioxide is above 15 millimeters of mercury, it indicates compressions are generating perfusion. On the other hand, low end tidal carbon dioxide below 10 millimeters of mercury may indicate poor compression technique, or low perfusion and metabolism after a long downtime or shock, even with good compressions. Next basic concept is the shock energy when using defibrillator aka, AED. Shock energy for defibrillation depends on whether the AED is biphasic or monophasic. When AED is biphasic, follow manufacturer recommendation energy level. If it is unknown, use maximum energy available. Second and subsequent shock energy should be equivalent or higher than the previous one. If AED is monophasic, the shock energy level should be 360 joules. Advanced airway refers to endotracheal intubation or supraglottic advanced airway. You can use waveform capnography or capnometry to confirm and monitor endotracheal tube placement. Once an advanced airway is in place, you don't need to stop compression to do ventilation. Give one breath every 6 seconds with continuous chest compressions. Return of spontaneous circulation means regaining normal pulse and blood pressure, Abrupt sustained increase in end tidal CO2 typically over 40 mm of mercury, and spontaneous arterial pressure waves with intra-arterial monitoring. At any point of the resuscitation step, if the victim shows ROSC, stop ACLS and bring the victim to post-cardiac arrest care center for further management. While performing ACLS, you also need to treat reversible causes that might have led to this cardiac arrest. Remember it as 5H and 5T. 5H are hypovolemia, hypoxia, hydrogen ion acidosis, hypo or hyperkalemia, and hypothermia. 5T are tension pneumothorax, tamponade cardiac, toxins, thrombosis pulmonary, and thrombosis coronary. Now, let's go through the ACLS algorithm steps. First step is to start CPR while also attaching a monitor or defibrillator and giving oxygen. Next step, monitor cardiac rhythm to see if it is shockable or not. Ventricular fibrillation or pulseless ventricular tachycardia is a shockable rhythm. Give on shock and perform CPR immediately for 2 minutes. Also get intravenous or intraosseous access. After 2 minute CPR, recheck cardiac rhythm. If it is shockable, give shock once more and perform CPR immediately for an additional 2 minutes. Also in this step, start giving epinephrine 1 mg every 3 to 5 minutes and consider advanced airway. After another 2 minutes, recheck the rhythm. If it is shockable, give another shock and perform CPR for 2 minutes. In this step, give amiodarone or lidocaine in addition to the previous epinephrine which you were already giving every 3 to 5 minutes. When giving amiodarone, the first dose is 300 mg bolus and second dose is 150 mg. When giving lidocaine, the first dose is 1 to 1.5 mg per kilogram and second dose is 0.5 to 0.75 mg per kilogram. Repeat these steps until you monitor unshockable rhythm or return of spontaneous circulation. If the rhythm is unshockable at any point, start CPR immediately for 2 minutes and give epinephrine 1 mg every 3 to 5 minutes via intravenous or intraosseous access. 
Also, consider advanced airway. Recheck the rhythm after 2 minutes of CPR and manage accordingly depending whether the rhythm is shockable or unshockable. Thank you for watching my video. Please subscribe for more medical updates.